Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about flow. I'm not talking about flow, the sassy kiss grits waitress from the TV sitcom Alice. I'm talking about flow as in the, the zone, the mind state that you get into that allows this really efficient, uninterrupted work output. If you know what flow is, you just know what it is. If you never flow, then you probably are confused right now. It's hard to define flow. Um, it takes a while to get into it. Um, some people can drop into flow quickly. Other people, like me, it takes 15 or 20 minutes of doing a task before you fall into flow. Also, interruptions, immediately, boom. You get interrupted, flow for me just crumbles into pieces. Now, different people need or experience different amounts of flow. Some experience different amounts, some need different amounts to get their actual tasks done. And like I said, for some people who never flow, they don't even know what we're talking about. For those of you who have experienced flow, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's something that you love when it happens, but sometimes it's hard to make happen. What I've learned over time is that different tasks need different amount of flow. Because I've done a lot of programming and design, I discovered that programming, at least for me, needs, needs flow more, much more than design does. And by what I mean by that is when I'm coding and I get into flow, I produce better code and I work faster and some programming tasks really need it. And that's an interesting thing right there is not only do different tasks um, require a different amount of flow, but sometimes different types of the same task need different amount of flow. For me, if I'm writing brand new code, especially the more complicated it is, I need flow to do it. However, if I'm debugging, especially if I've just set some breakpoints and I'm looping through and waiting for something to happen, I don't need a lot of flow. Um, because of that, interruptions for different kinds of flow can mean something different for me. If I'm debugging and I get interrupted, it's not a big deal. But for a lot of my programming, when I get interrupted, the flow is immediately gone and it takes me a long time to get back into it. Um, Another thing I've noticed is younger me got into flow a lot faster than older me. Younger me could sometimes get into flow within a minute or two, where sometimes I was I was doing some code yesterday because I've had some idea for my, my space game. It took me like 15 minutes before I fell back into the code flow. And then I, then I looked up and two hours had gone by and I had written some really cool torpedo code. So that's something I've noticed. Also, just over time, and this was true for younger me, but it took me a while for younger me to figure this out, and something older me knows for sure, is that I flow better and faster in the morning. So I do a lot of my stuff. I do my videos in the morning. I do my client work in the morning. If I have something complicated, I want to code. I try to do that in the morning. And then after lunch, I save after lunch time for things like, oh, people want to have meetings. People want to talk about stuff. People want me to review, say, a design doc, or I have to run errands. I'll do that in the afternoon. Now, I've also learned that there are some tasks out there that need absolutely no flow whatsoever. I've talked about brainstorming, where I like to sit down with people and bounce ideas off of them. I don't need to be in flow for that. Um, in fact, I kind of prefer not to be. I want to be... Um, I want to be able to focus on what other people are saying and I want to be able to respond and I want to be kind of an intuitive, visceral response. I don't want to be in flow. I don't want to be focused, hyper-focused on anything. Some tasks I've discovered resist flow or even any kind of planning. Now, paradoxically, I'm including in this like bursts of creativity. When I suddenly have this idea that pops into my head, sometimes... First of all, you can't plan for that. I've had people go, oh, we want, we want you to come up with like a dozen funny things for this area of the game. 
it's really hard for me to say, oh yeah, I have that for you tomorrow because I can't just sit down and go, okay, time to be funny. It just comes to me. It's just, I, I, I will be sitting about something. And I'm like, oh, suddenly I think of four or five things right in a row. So creative bursts are resistant like, to dropping into flow and being creative. And also you can't even plan for them. By the way, this is why I keep notebooks with me or I try to have a notebook on my desk. I, if, if not, I keep my phone on me at all times and I have a, I have a note file in there and I'll, sometimes I just send myself an email. If I'm in a rush and I don't feel like doing anything else, I'll just open up email, write down what I'm thinking and mail it to myself. The nice thing about that is that provides me with a time stamped record of my idea. So later on, if I convert it to a digital or paper note in my notes section, I've got that information. Now, I know a lot of you don't like working in groups, don't like having meetings, and I can see why, especially if, if, if what I'm saying about flow resonates with you, you're probably thinking, this is why I don't like meetings. It breaks up my flow. But if you work in a group, you need to figure out how to work with other people and how to have meetings. I know it's a problem for flow. You're going to have to solve that because I think when people say, I don't ever want to have meetings, you are being extraordinarily counterproductive because other people do need meetings. And some tasks do need coordination that a meeting makes better than an email or Slack message. A lot of people think every meeting can be replaced with an email or Slack. That just isn't true. In my experience, it isn't true. I've never met anybody who I can replace all my meetings with email and Slack. A lot of them, yeah, but I've never met anyone that 100% of my meetings can be replaced. So... I understand that if if you're not very extroverted and you also experience a lot of this flow, especially and you think your particular kind of work needs flow, then here are my recommendations for you. First of all, figure out for yourself exactly what tasks need flow. Think about everything you do. Think about whether or not you get into flow for it. And then for each one of the, those tasks that you think you need flow for, try to figure out how much flow you need, and for how long. And if you're like me, figure out if that flow happens in a certain time of day. Some of you are afternoon people. Some of you are evening people. Figure out when that flow happens, how much you need, and how long it needs to be for your tasks. Then organize your day accordingly. It is much better if you can tell a producer, could you, could you schedule my meetings in the afternoon? Or could you schedule my meetings in the morning? I knew people who loved to have meetings at 10 in the morning because they usually arrived at work, figured out what they were going to do for the day, wanted to get their meetings out of the way, and then they would work all afternoon. Personally, I like to come in, look at my emails, figure out what I was going to do for the day, do the things that required flow, and then have my meetings in the afternoon. Now, of course, these, some of these are contradictory. You will have to work that out. Occasionally, you're going to have to say, okay, there's one day a week where I'm going to do afternoon meetings, or there's one day a week I'm going to do morning meetings, whatever that means. But work, work, do the work ahead of time and then work with your producer, your producer or someone else who can help you organize your day so you still get the flow you need. But there are times where you can be interrupted or have a meeting where it's the least disruptive time to the flow you need to do. I hope this video made sense. I know it sounds very um, jargony, but flow is one of those things that I've always had trouble explaining to people who don't do it. And for people who, who know flow, I've had trouble explaining, hey, you're, you're occasionally gonna to have to pick times of day where you're willing to have your flow interrupted. So I hope this video made sense. And I hope you get your flow.